Do you want to know what makes your knowledge grow? Then everybody watch Dean Show, The Dean Show. Bismillah, alhamdulillah, assalamu alaikum. Peace be unto you. Thank you for tuning in to another episode of The Dean Show. We're here trying to help you understand Islam and Muslims. Now, we're going to be talking about the most important topic in Islam. Islam simply, simply, it's very simple, means to surrender your will to the will of the Creator. That means you're going to do what the Creator wants you to do. Now, this topic is something that all the messengers of God talked about. They delivered this same simple message. It's not complicated. Your young son and young daughter can understand this. If you're non-Muslim, do not turn the channel. If you've got your non-Muslim friend, or even for the Muslims that might have some confusion about this, they're talking about everything under the sun except this most important factor. God Almighty is the most merciful and loving. And if you get this wrong, and you take a wrong turn here, and you put a partner next to the one who created you, this can be something that can put you in a place that is very hot. But if you get it right, which we want you to get it right, this can land you in a place of eternal bliss and happiness. So when we come back, we're going to be discussing Tawheed, pure monotheism, like nothing or anything else that you've ever heard, pure monotheism. When we come back here on The Dean Show with my brother and your brother, Kamal al Maliki. Be right back. This is the Dean, the Dean Show. This is the Dean Show. This is the Dean, this is the Dean Show. This is the Dean, this is the Dean Show. This is the Dean Show. This is the Dean, this is the Dean Show. 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 Peace be unto you. How are you doing, brother? 100%. Back on the Dean Show. Happy to have you here. Always a pleasure. Thank you. And may Allah, the creator of the heavens and the earth, reward you for taking your time to be with us. There's so many people that are out there, they're wanting to know the truth, and we're trying to deliver it in a simple way so everyone can understand. And this is the most important topic. Absolutely. In Arabic we say Tawheed. What does this mean? Tawheed refers to the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When you say Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, what does this mean? It means uh, Allah, you know, the, the most exalted, basically. Mm -hmm. yes. But Allah, of course, is God in Arabic. Yeah. But you see, the, the topic of Tawheed, it means Allah is one, right? Yeah. And most people, when they hear that, they're like, okay, well, that's easy, and yeah. I don't need to hear about this anymore. And even some Muslims now, when you talk about Tawheed, they get like, Tawheed again, I think we're tired of this topic. Yeah. But you can never get tired of the topic, it's the most important one. If you get this wrong... You have problems, to That's say the it. least. Fail the test. Okay, but let's look at, at it this way. Uh -huh. You know, one of the things that prove the importance of Tawheed is that on every single page of the Quran, there is a mention of Tawheed, either direct or indirect. Every single, every single page. This is the verbatim word of Allah, of God Almighty, the, yes, Quran. the Quran. It's on every single page. Every single page. Mm -hmm. So then the Muslims who read the Quran, why don't they say, oh, Tawheed again, oh, Tawheed again? Because it's that important. Yeah. Allah put it on every page. Like, what if the whole page is talking about an incident between Musa and Pharaoh and Fir'aun, for example. How, that is all about Tawheed. That the whole conflict started because of Tawheed. Yeah. So every single page of the Qur'an, either directly or indirectly, is mentioning Tawheed. You know, even the name Allah is Tawheed in it. So it's not for a believing man or, or woman to say, oh, look, we're tied with the subject of Tawheed. It's the most important topic. Yeah. That's one, by every page of the Qur'an having it. The other thing Allah Azza wa says in the Qur'an, وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَا مِنْ قَبْلِكَ مِنْ, مِنْ, مِنْ رَسُولٍ إِلَّا نُوحِي إِلَيْهِ أَنَّهُ لَا إِلَهِ إِلَّا أَنَا فَعْبُدُونَ We have not sent a, a, a prophet before you except that we reveal to him that there is no God worthy of worship except me, so worship me. 
So every prophet got the message of Tawheed. No, no prophet came without this message. That's the number one message. N name a few of them. For example, even if you look at it biblical or otherwise, but you look look at all the prophets. Look at Moses, Musa alayhi salam, he brought Tawheed. Ibrahim brought Tawheed. David, Solomon, Sulaiman, Lot. All of them mentioned Tawheed. Even Jesus, of course, that people claim that he's the third God had. Even he spoke of Tawheed. And the majority, I mean, of humanity, just by coincidence that when you mention these names, Moses, Abraham, Noah, I mean, even people that are so-called like atheists, they know these names. Absolutely. They know these people, these messengers. I'll tell you something interesting. Yeah. All right? There, uh, scholars, Muslim scholars believe that there's no such thing as a pure atheist. And I also believe this very strongly. Yeah, yeah. That there is no human being on the face of the planet who is 100% atheist. Mm -hmm. There is no such thing. Yeah. Even, even the people who absolutely are adamant that they're atheists, deep, deep down, sometimes they can't dig that deep down. Yeah. They believe there is a God. Yeah. They, they it's must. natural. You, you just deny something that's within your very nature. Huh? And the proof they use yeah. for that is a verse uh, in Surah An-Naml, the ant, where Allah says, talking about Fir'aun, yeah. who claimed to be God, Pharaoh boiled people alive because they believed in Allah. He said, yeah. there is no God but me. He was, I mean, he boiled people alive, so he must really not believe there's another God. Pharaoh, that was a king yeah. back at the time at of time. Moses. Moses, okay. So if he boiled people alive, he must really be sure there's no God, right? But then Allah says, really powerful verse, وَجَحَدُوا بِهَا وَاسْتَيْقَنَتْهَا أَنفُسُهُمْ ظُلْمًا وَعُلُوًا That they denied it, but they were certain of it in, internally. They were yeah. certain of the existence of Allah. Mm -hmm. If this guy is boiling people alive, he's so sure there's no God, and Allah says he is certain that there is, mm -hmm. that means everybody else, for sure. I mean, no one as bad as he is, no one went that far. Yeah. So that means everybody in deep down they believe that there is a God. Yeah. And as much as they deny it. Uh, just uh, this is just uh, on a side note, why do you think this they, they deny it? Why do they cover it up? Well, because uh, a lot of times people come from a religion where the their background is that the explanations are not adequate. Mm. And so they think that well this doesn't make sense and the concept of God in this religion doesn't make sense. There there is no God. People made this up. Yeah. Those people haven't looked at it in Islam. And they haven't read the Quran. That's and they're they going to learn now in this show, God willing, because obviously when you start uh, saying that God was a man, that he had a son, that he was a monkey or an elephant or a rat, these kind of things, that there's weird things out there. You start to associate an intelligent person who's using his head right. that this ain't right. So they put all religions in the same bucket. Or even a God that would physically come down to earth, wrestle with men, not even be able to out-wrestle them and do kind of strange things. That's not very appealing no. to some people. So it turned them off from the whole idea of God. Okay. But the problem is they need to look at it everywhere. Look, look at the concept in Islam as well. Don't yeah. put all the religions under one umbrella and say all of them don't have a good concept. So they got, we got their attention. Say, what, okay, now what do you have to offer? What's this Tawheed you're talking about? Well, basically Tawheed is like the simple message that we uh -huh. were saying. And it's linked to your eternal salvation. To believe in Allah and to only worship Him alone. Not to associate any living being or tree or rock or anything with Him. And this is a problem that we have with all the majority of religions or all just about all religions and within Islam itself. We have Muslims now who instead of directing all of their worship, 100% of it to Allah, they directed a portion of it or part of it to something besides Allah. Hoping that this will link them to Allah, bring them closer to whatever it is. But it's still... Is, is still wrong, it's still yeah. not Tawheed. Because in a hadith, uh, authentic hadith, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, I am an aghna shuraka an shirk. He says, I am in need of partners in the least. Whoever worships me and something else with me, I will direct all his worship to that other item. That means you don't set up no partner, no co equal with God. It's only God, only the Creator, only Absolutely. Allah alone. When we come back, we'll give some examples on a show. لا إله إلا الله محمد رسول All of the prophets would have been labeled Muslims because this essential message was the same message submission to the will of God This is God talking to you directly How can I stand behind the pulpit on Sunday morning and preach a sermon that I knew was at variance with the actual taproot of Christianity Back here on the Dean Show. Okay, so the messengers came with that same message, worship God, submit to God alone. Now you have people developing all these different philosophies, theologies, and they are going away from the simple message. How did this occur? All right, well, uh, historically, it would it start off, it would actually start off, one of the, there are a number of things, okay? 
that lead to something being worshipped besides Allah. One of them is over praising someone or something. Mm. And this for this reason is very interesting. The Arabs came to the Prophet, وسلم, Prophet Muhammad, وسلم, and they told him, they praised him. They said, You are our best and the son of our best. Mm -hmm. You're our Sayyid and the son of our best. So he stopped them. He said, Do not overpraise me as the Christians overpraise the son of Mary. Now, in another day, he said, I am the best. But when they came and told him, You're the best, he stopped them. Why? He, he was cutting off the avenue to being overpraised because mm -hmm. he knew that overpraising is one of the avenues that leads you to becoming worshipped. Let's take the, the example of the people of Nuh, the prophet Noah. His people, there were some righteous men uh, you know, in the area. And the people loved these righteous men so much. And they started to overpraise them and, and you know, mention them so well. And when these people died, over the generations and with all this praise and stories and nonsense that started to, to surround them, they became gods. It, it wasn't anymore that this was a righteous man who lived many years ago. This was a god. And so Wad, Suwa, Yaghuth, Ya'uq, Nasr that were mentioned, these were all names of righteous men who became idols in the end because people put something to represent them. You know, this righteous man used to stand and pray here. When he dies, we put a rock where he used to to stand. Mm -hmm. And then after a while, guess what? Some generations later, this rock is worshipped now. instead now of Now that's a partner next to the crater. Exactly. Okay. So now, overpraising is one of the avenues that lead to it. Even idols and making statues and images is one of the things that helps that. Putting that's a partner. why Shirk. Absolutely. Okay. And that's why in Islam, to preserve Islam, we were not allowed to make idols and images so that eventually people might worship them. Okay. And um, so basically the idea is that you know, Allah, Allah created you and He is the only one who gives you all the good that you have and then you come up and take some, some rock or tree or stone and you start to worship that. How about, or, a, how about a man or a monkey? Even worse, I mean. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, it's like, you know, someone does good to you. Let's say someone, you know, buy, pays for your ticket. Like, you know, what you've done, you know, I'm, I've, brought, I've been brought all the way to Chicago. You guys have been so good and oh, we're sure, eating out and, and all this stuff. And imagine at the end of all this trip, I, I go to some stranger in the street, you know, thank you very much for bringing me down here. Thanks for all the good food and I appreciate it. And I, I, don't, I thank some stranger in the street. Doesn't make Doesn't sense. Doesn't make any sense. Yeah. Allah is the one who gives you everything that you have. And then you go and, and genuflect and bow down to a piece of rock yeah. or to someone else or to his messenger. Yeah. who came to tell you to worship Him. Well, what about some people who say, you know what, these people are more righteous than us. They have a better connection, so we're trying to go through them to get to God. And, and the, the answer very really bluntly is that these people are none of your business. And Allah says that in the Quran, but yeah. in a nicer way. Yeah. Allah says, أَلَا إِنَّ أَوْلِيَاءِ اللَّهِ لَا خَوْفٌ عَلَيْهِمْ وَلَا هُمْ يَحْزَنُونَ The awliya, these, these, close, these friends of Allah, meaning these righteous men, there is no fear upon them, nor will they become saddened. The ayah doesn't mention you, yeah. there's no fear for them, nor will they be sad. Mm -hmm. So you rubbing on their shoes and trying to worship them and, 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 and kiss their feet and stuff, it has nothing to do with you. Mm -hmm. you know? so, the, so who do you have to follow the Prophet ﷺ? I know people argue, they say, well, they're righteous men. We need to see what they did yeah. to become righteous men. No, you don't. You need to see what the Prophet ﷺ did. That'll take you to righteousness. So, so I'm so sinful now. I'm someone who's done so much bad. This person is such a righteous person. And they compare it like, you know what? If you want to go see the president, you don't, and you can't just go directly to them. Mm -hmm. You have to go through the secretary or you have to go to the attorney general, etc. Or know someone that's connected. Right. This is how I can get to my mission. And, and that's actually an insult to Allah. Mm. Because... You know, a, a, a tyrant or someone who's not accessible to his people, you have to go through his secretaries and go through his ministers to reach them. All right? But at the time of the first Khalifa, Abu Bakr, did you have to go through anyone? Was he accessible? Yes, because he was a very good leader, right? Mm -hmm. The Prophet ﷺ, was he accessible or did you have to go through Umar? He was accessible. Why? Because he was a very good man and a very good leader. All the, all the prophets like Jesus, Moses, Abraham, they were all accessible? They were all accessible to people. Yeah. The, the poor man could walk straight up to Jesus and ask him something. They didn't have to go through and make an appointment yeah. now for, you know, I'll see you in two weeks. That's only how it works with tyrants and kings. Yeah. So and that's things. a bad analogy. So then. you're saying this about Allah, that you got to go through someone to get to Him? So we got to fix the question, huh? we got to fix that big, big time because Allah says in the Quran that if you call me, I'll answer you. Yeah. You know, that I'm close to you. How about we go in a confession box and people go behind the screen and they confess their sins and get a few Hail Marys and then they're all good. What, what about this? And, and that's the thing. That's the beauty of Islam. I don't have to get in my car and drive and go in a little box and tell somebody anything. 
you have a direct relationship with Allah. I mean, it's really weird that you have a direct relationship with Allah and you got to go somewhere to a tree, to a box, to a dead, to a grave where there's a dead man. Allah tells you you have a direct link. That's so rational. It's, and that's the easiest thing, wouldn't yeah. it be? Yeah. Why do people fall into this, you think? There's always a philosophy, there's always an explanation behind it. Some, and some went so extreme, some groups actually believe, and Allah is far removed from this, that a part of Allah emanates and comes into this human being or this sheikh, and that's why you can make sujood and prostrate to him, and it's not a big deal, yeah. because a part of Allah is in him, things of that sort. So the nonsense can keep going on and on and on. The truth is, it's so simple. Yeah. There's only one God. There's no link. You don't need intercessions, intermediaries between you and him. And that's it. It doesn't yeah. get easier than that. Did Moses pray through Jesus? Or did Jesus pray through someone? Or did the first man, Adam? The first man, Adam, that's when we go back to the original. Right. Did he go through anybody? Or did any of the messengers? What was the way they did it? Well... Obviously, the way they did it was basically, it was a direct relationship between you and Allah. They prayed to Allah directly. And if you want to look at it big, biblically, it's very interesting in the Old Testament, how many times God would warn, not warn, threaten, threaten, like Solomon and David, and threaten them, if you ever take anything in, in worship besides me. Yeah. I mean, these are actual threats. I'll do this to you if you do that. I'll do that to you. I'll have this happen to your women. I'll have that happen to you. Really strong threats. Don't you dare take anything in worship besides me. Mm -hmm. And this was a consistent message in the Old Testament. And realistically, it's consistent in the New Testament as well. But then suddenly, all of a sudden, you have people adding things to it and trying to say, you know, that you worship others along with Allah or through them. But... There's no evidence to any of that. You made a beautiful analogy, something that you said if someone had given you something and now you didn't think that person, you were thinking someone else has nothing to do with it. Can you give some more analogies to bring it home so people can really understand the simplicity of worshiping God alone and something that is unnatural and something that we shouldn't be doing, setting up or going through anyone to get to God? Right. Well, uh, actually, there was, a, there was a nice example of, uh, <laughs> very logical as well. And it shows you the logic of Tawheed, where um, the Prophet ﷺ asked a man, he tells him, he says, how many gods do you worship? He says, I worship uh, six on earth and one in the heavens. Yeah. He said, if the situation gets really, really bad, who do you call upon? He said, the one in heaven. He said, then leave the six on earth and just focus on the one in heaven. Yeah. And it made perfect sense to the man. And does it make sense or not? Yeah. It is so easy. I mean, always Tawheed will make much more sense. And why would I worship six, but when the going gets tough, I worship the one in the heavens? Yeah. That means he is the one to go to. Yeah. So leave the other six then. Yeah. You know? And that's the thing. One, actually, one Christian author, he talks about, uh, he did a study and, he, and he's saying that uh, people would love Jesus more than, uh, meaning looking at him as a God, yeah. love him more than the Father. Why? Because they see God the Father, according to them, as someone who is so angry and can't forgive until someone else has to die for this sin. Then yeah. he'll start forgiving. And then the Son is the sweet one who came and offered up his life so that they could be forgiven. Yeah. So that's why they, they love him more. And you, you hear more talk about Jesus than you hear about God. Why? Because He's the one who came and died for us. He's the one who loves us and so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. so, so even when there is more than one God in concept or in theory, you have people loving one more than the other. Yeah. So it, it's, it's an equation that just doesn't balance so out. So all this love, unconditional love, revering one the most is to the Creator. Absolutely. The one who created the sun, the moon, Jesus, Muhammad, that's the God. Yes. Tell us now... And we want to give some more examples and because we're almost out of time, some modern day where some people will sit and ask, you know, close their eyes. You see some kids calling on Santa to if they're naughty or nice, right. you know, they won't get these presents. So they're praying like, is, is it a prayer? They're beseeching him for these gifts and get me this and I'll do this. Or some people will be praying to Jesus and saying, oh, Jesus, in your name and this to the Father. And then some people also praying. It's sad. They're praying through the prophet, peace be upon him. Right. Talk to us about this. Well, this is a problem is that people's hearts are not attached to Allah. They're attached to all kinds of other things. They're attached to amulets that are supposed to protect Amulets, you. Amulets, huh? I mean, and that's why the Prophet forbade okay. all these kinds of things. Mostly because they replace Allah in your heart. Yeah. I can tell you stories of people who were hanging on to these amulets and saying, you know, 
it saved me. Allah saved you. What yeah. are you talking about? It's, it's a piece of paper that's folded up a little bit. Mm -hmm. So you're saying this thing saved you instead of saying Allah saved me. Yeah. People calling on, on, you know, relying on whatever, if they're righteous people or sorcerers or prophets or people who have passed away. Why? Because there's no attachment to Allah. If people, their hearts were attached to Allah, they wouldn't go through these other avenues. And shirk is the biggest problem that we have. in the yeah. world. Biggest problem that we have. People worshipping other than Allah or people worshipping other things along with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So you don't ask Santa for these things, you ask the one who created you Allah. You don't pray through Jesus, Moses, Muhammad, you pray directly to the one creator, an ambulance that go around the neck and around the arm, etc. We don't need these. Absolutely lucky charms, not. lucky rabbit foot, <laughs> lucky penny. What about that? Actually, I mean, all of these, they, when you look at the rabbit's foot, and all, they all have some kind of pagan belief. You know, yeah. The rabbits, they thump the ground sometimes with their feet like that. And so uh, they, the people, the pagans believe that they were com communicating with gods that were under the earth. Yeah. And that's why the rabbit's foot was lucky, because that's what it used to mean. It's not lucky for the rabbit who's missing his foot. <laughs> exactly. Huh? <laughs> not at all. <laughs> so, and there's so many other things, you know, the breaking a mirror is bad luck and the black cat. All of these, when you trace their history, it goes back to some kind of pagan belief or belief in more than one god. We're going to continue talking about pure monotheism, Tawheed and some of the common things that people do that are against this, against things that the messengers brought in the last final message of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, we'll be back on the scene show. Allah, only one well, they often say to me, why have you become a Muslim? No, I, I give a very frivolous answer. I say, I want to be on the side of the angels. Allah, only one Tupac is a guy, he's the number one rap artist in the world. He sold over 60 million records worldwide. 60 million? 60 million. He was a young guy who had basically everything that some of the youth would think that life is all about. He had everything you can imagine. The Dean Show. I heard that people used to knock, they had a tree god, and they used to knock on this tree to wake them up so they can ask. And nowadays you'll see people like when they say a phrase or a sentence, say, oh, oh knock on wood. Right. What do you think about this? Uh, you know, sometimes people will use these phrases and not realize, you know, what it means. But, uh, you know, knocking on wood, it's related to that or related to, like, again, a pagan belief that there were tree gods. And yeah. so you would knock yeah. on the wooden tree and either to communicate or to wake up that god. So, yeah. again, it goes back to paganism. Uh, the, not like taking out the number 13 in some elevators you see, right. or people not flying on the Friday the 13th. Or right. What about this? Uh, because, well, the Last Supper, there were 12 men, yeah. and the 13th man betrayed Jesus. Yeah. So the 13th became unlucky. Yeah. And this happened on a Friday. Yeah. So if it's Friday and the 13th, oh, yeah. it's a very... But, it, again, there's, there's, no, there's no science behind it, there's no logic behind yeah. it, nor is there really anything religious behind yeah. it. I mean. So cutting your nails on a certain day, that's forbidden, or breaking a mirror, and not, or walking under a ladder, or, oh, the black cat, you know, the black cat yeah. that crossed your way, these will all go against Tawheed? It, it's all, I mean, and not only that, it's just nonsensical. Like the black cat, they were believed to be pets, uh, a witch's pet. So yeah. a witch always had a black cat as a pet. But we don't even believe in the witch, I mean, yeah. obviously. The mirror breaking, there was some cultures believe that your reflection in the mirror was your soul. Uh -huh. So if the mirror broke, something bad would happen to your yeah. soul. Not nonsense. nonsense. Leave it alone. Absolutely. Okay, now, hold on to your seats. I mean, we have to speak the truth. And we're not trying to be harsh with the people, but we're trying to deliver everything. And these were the warnings, and we'll get to the glad tidings, but there was a warning. If you die on this, setting up a partner, with the one who created you, what's the consequence? It is the worst sin ever. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, in, in chapter number 4, Surah Al-Nisa, Allah Azza wa says, Inna Allah la yaghfiru an yushraka bih, wa yaghfiru ma duna dhalika liman yasha, wa man yushrik billahi faqad iftara ithman azimah. Allah does not forgive that you set up partners with him. Mm -hmm. But he may forgive anything else to whomever he wills. He can forgive anything else. But he won't forgive this, that you set up partners with him, and whoever sets up partners along with Allah, or instead of Allah, he has come forth with something extremely evil, or a big lie against Allah. Yeah. So, so this is a sin that will never be forgiven, meaning that you need to, if you, if you die committing shirk, meaning worshipping something with Allah or besides Allah, you will never go into paradise. 
it, for all eternity, you will never go into paradise. But if you're doing it now and you repent, stop it, then it's like you started over again. Mm -hmm. So anyone who worships any god, if you believe in three gods instead of one, or you, or you put any act of worship Trinity. towards... Trinity. Trinity, or any worship towards anything besides the one god, then you can repent from it this moment. And He's no the most loving, the most merciful God. He will forgive you. And you don't have to go, in, like we were saying, you don't have to go anywhere. You can f get your forgiveness right now. You can repent from it. You don't have to go through anybody. Just direct dial up. That's it. That's it. And you just repent God from it. God alone. Allah That's alone. That's it. And this is, again, the message you'll find everywhere. You'll find it all throughout the Quran. You'll find it all throughout the Bible, Old and New Testament. Yeah. Because it's the biggest sin. So the biggest sin will be warned from the most. Yeah. And that's the sin actually in the Quran that Allah warns us of the most. He'll warn us from lying, from yeah. stealing. But number one, He always warns people from worshipping something besides. Now, now some people are non-Muslim brothers in humanity. Now they, they never heard this word Allah. We know that this is the, the God who created the sun and the moon. Jesus prayed to Him. Muhammad prayed to him, this is the creator of the heavens and earth, but they never heard this. So they might feel a little bit, you know, uh, timid about this. Uh, what can they do if they feel this? Well, uh, they just need to understand that it's just the way you say God in Arabic, you, yeah. know, you say Allah. And uh, there's actually English versions of the Bible, it's hard to find anymore, but the, the Schofield version of the Bible had Allah in it. It said Allah yeah. as, as the name of God. Yeah. So there you go. It yeah, had nothing to do with until they do some research. Can they say the Creator who created, who gave me these eyes, the one who gave me my heart, the one Absolutely. who Jesus prayed to, forgive me, guide me. I only want to worship you. Can they do that? Absolutely, they can do that. Yeah, that's simple. Yeah, and well, this is the mo this is the most important message of Islam. So if you found this message of one God appealing, then that's the most important thing about Islam. Everything will fall in place after Absolutely. that. Absolutely, give them the glad tidings. Give them the glad tidings that if they die, not associating partners and doing what God wants them to do, what's the ultimate rewards? If, if they die only believing in one God, only worshipping in one God, if you do that, then the reward is eternal paradise. Eternal paradise, never coming out of it. And even if someone has tons and tons of sins that cause them to go into the hellfire, Prophet ﷺ explained to us that eventually they will come out of the hellfire. Yeah. Why? Because of La ilaha illallah, there is no God worthy of worship except Allah. That will bring people out of the hell. That makes so much sense. What about the last and final message sent to mankind? How should they go about this? Again, something new, you know, they have to look into it, talk about just some advice. Basically, the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, was the final messenger of Allah. He was sent to Arabia 1400 years ago. But the most important thing, the message that he came with, which is the Qur'an. You read the Qur'an, you see the message of, that he came with. And you look at his life and his teachings and you see that he came with the message consistent with the message of all the prophets that came before him. So it's not a diversion from the consistent message, but it's actually a continuation in a sense. And of course, we're in the day and age where you can look that up and find some good and genuine information and go to the Dean Show and find some other sites. And Alhamdulillah. So the first thing is to acknowledge what's in your very nature. And then from there, you, got to, you need a blueprint how to live your life. You do some work. And that's where the that. messengers came. Last final message, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Allah, that's what we need to do to be successful. Thank you very, very Thank much you, for being sir. with us. May Allah, the creator of heaven and the earth, reward you. Abundantly. Yeah. And that is it for another episode of the Dean Show. Come back every week. TheDeanShow.com If you want to learn more or if you're ready to accept the way of life of all the messengers of God, you want to gain peace, call the number on the screen, 1-800-662-ISLAM. Visit our blog section to interact with us and some of our podcasts are there. And this is simple, it's rational, it's logical. Worship God alone. Do not set up a co-equal or co-partner with God. Submit to the one who created you, who gave you the eyes, the ears, the heart, everything that you have, you owe it all to him. Turn and be thankful to him. We'll see you next time here on the Dean Show. Assalamu alaikum. Peace be unto you.